Hi, I'm Annie McLeod, and I'm a project management coach and mentor, and one of the founders of the Project Management Game Board. I've been managing projects since 1984. Uh, my first project was automating productivity measurement at a post office plant for a national post office, if you can imagine. And I've also had the opportunity to work in wireless in the 90s um, and dot coms before the bust, uh, multiple mergers and acquisitions, as well as numerous IT projects. I'm passionate about project managers and making sure that their projects are successful. So I want to tell you a quick story about how the project management game board came to be. So a few years ago, I met Mel Clifford, and Mel was also a project manager with numerous years of experience, and he also had experience um, in multiple countries as well as multiple content continents. I have trouble with that word. Um, and industries. So we discovered between the two of us, we had over 60 years of project management experience. And the unique part was we both had lots of successes in projects and making projects successful and project teams successful. Like myself, Mel was a project management professional. He had his PMP and we had both learned that that textbook approach to uh, projects didn't always work. So we shared some of our frustrations um, with project failures, and we also looked at some of the statistics, things like um, infrastructure projects and how much money was wasted um, in terms of those projects. We also looked at how many software projects failed, um, that less than a third of projects were completed on time and on budget, and that executives really struggled with trying to figure out how their projects supported the st strategy of the organization. So we were just fascinated and just couldn't figure out like, why is all of this happening? Especially when you consider that there's so many different project management tools, techniques, methods. We have Agile, we have Scrum, we have Kanban, we have the Project Management Institute and Prince2 that are worldwide best practices in project management, yet those failures continue. So we wanted to find a better way. So we put our heads together and started thinking about what that might look like. And one of the first things we realized was, you know, it had to be simple and had to be visual. That we wanted to incorporate a few key things into it. So we wanted to have key steps in it, like one, two, three, four, very simple. We wanted to use things like checklists to make sure that things were accurate and complete. We wanted it to look like a game board so that we could incorporate fun. So again, we needed it to be simple to understand, no project management geek speak, um, Gantt charts, earn value, all those obtuse terms, make it visual and relatable, and make it applicable to every type of industry and organization. So we thought that was doing pretty good, that this was a really good start, but we were still missing something. And the something was really about people. Because at the end of the day, projects fail because of people. You can have the best Gantt charts in the world, and it's not going to ensure your project success. So Mel Clifford had worked with Trent Janish um, for a number of years on a program called the Foundation of Successful Teams. And they delivered that program to different organizations, and it really provided a foundation of making projects successful. So we decided to put that at the core of the project management game board. We also went and did research about what that cultural aspect was, because we knew culture was a bit of a tough sell in some organizations. So we looked at things like Project Aristotle that Google had done about how to build the perfect team and you know how that team members didn't drive team success. It wasn't how you selected them or who they were. It was all about building psychological safety and, and making those teams successful. The other thing or the other project that Google or study that they had published was Project Oxygen. So what makes Google's top employees their top employees? And much to their surprise, it was not science, technology, engineering, and math. 
It was the soft skills, you know, coaching, empathy, all of those type of things. And then those were very valuable studies. But then there was also the Harvard, a 10 year Harvard study that showed really in hard numbers. So revenue, stock price, net income, job growth of how a culture focused company had dramatically better results. So at that point, that's why we knew this culture stuff is really important. So we finalized the game board and we kept our principles that we had the four legs, we had checklists and we had the foundation of successful teams at the core. We knew we were ready to go to market and we wanted to do some beta testing. So we engaged two organizations, Protec Petroleum Services and Water Place Solutions, um, to test the game board out. And so we could really give it a, a thorough test and see how it worked. And we did kind of some classroom training. We did a little bit on whiteboards and, and we had a project management wall to see how to execute projects. And that went really well. So, for example, ProTech, they were able to incorporate some of our checklists into their bid, no bid process, and that allowed them to improve their capacity for projects as well as be successful in the profitability of those projects to make sure they were bidding on the right ones that they could be very successful on. In Waterplay, they implemented some of the checklists and processes into their product development cycle as different projects, um, their customer relationship management system incorporated some of the key questions. And they really leveraged it to try and reduce um, the draw on key resources of a very quickly growing organization. So we caught, thought that the beta results we were quite pleased with, but the next thing that came up was, what about the remote offices? In Waterplay's case, they had a office in Kelowna, one in the United States, one in China and one Australia. And in Protec's case, they had an office in Kamloops, one in Vancouver and one in Kelowna. So that actually was Protec that introduced us to at that time what was real-time board. And that was rebranded a couple of years ago and now is Miro. So we started to explore Miro and really um, simplistically, it's a whiteboard, um, a virtual whiteboard that's built for collaboration. But that really only scratches the surface of what its capabilities are. And we've spent two years now um, really exploring the depth and the breadth of, of how it can be best utilized. So along came 2020. And as everyone's well aware, um, with work from home, uh, that so many different organizations uh, moved into the virtual world. And so we knew we had to go digital. And in going digital, what we did is, is choose to have Miro as the backbone of our platform for the project management game board. So we undertook a project ourselves to digitize the game board. So what we've done is digitized it in Miro so that we're able to offer it to clients, kept the um, all the principles that we had put in originally. It's visual, it's simple, it's easy to understand, and it has culture at the core of it. Because we're still wanting to make all our project managers as successful as possible. So we have just launched the digital version of the project management game board and that is still working towards our vision because what our vision is to make you know project teams sponsors project managers successful by equipping people with the best collaboration techniques and project best practices because we're trying to build resilience into organizations, into project teams, giving uh, project managers and sponsors tools and techniques that'll make every project successful.